Pro Wrestling Weekly presents Today in Wrestling History, October 22. On this date in 2006, TNA Wrestling held its Bound for Glory pay-per-view. In the main event, Sting defeated Jeff Jarrett in a title versus career match to retain the NWA World Heavyweight Championship. On this date in 1995, WWE held its In Your House pay-per-view. In the main event, the British Bulldog defeated Diesel by disqualification in a match for the WWE Championship. Because of the disqualification, Diesel retained the title. On this date in 1942, Pedro Morales was born. The former world champion and WWE Hall of Famer turns 69 today. On this date in 2000, WWE held its No Mercy pay-per-view. In the main event, Kurt Angle defeated The Rock in a no-disqualification match to win the WWE Championship. This has been Today in Wrestling History, October 22. You are listening to Pro Wrestling Weekly with Ferran Derry. Thank you very much, Easy e Eric Bischoff. Welcome back to Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. Before we get too far into things, I want to let you know a uh, little, little something to plan for for next week. I know we've talked about it in bits and pieces over the last few weeks once it was announced. Courtesy of our, courtesy of our good friends over at George's Cards and Collectibles, that's right. Get ready to be stratified. Trish Stratus will be appearing at their new Oxford Valley Mall location. That's right, right on the lower level there. One week from today, October 29th, that's going to be from 1 until 3 o'clock. So you can head, make your way over there, listen to me in the car, ra- you know, on the car radio from uh, noon to 1. And then, of course, Trish will be there from 1 until 3. For more info, give them a call at 215 215- Nine four three two four seven five. Again, that's two one five nine four three two four seven five. Or you can also get more information on their website at George's Collectibles dot com. They also have the Facebook page. Trish Stratus, though. One week from today, that's October 29th from one to three at the new Oxford Valley Mall location of George's Cards and Collectibles. I'm gonna have to see what I can do about getting over there as well, because uh, definitely one of my favorites, and certainly not too bad on the eyes even now, at the still ripe young age of. <laughs> yeah, no, we will. <laughs> I'm sure you can find that out on your own. Uh, let's uh, let's go back to the phones. Fred's been waiting patiently. Fred, welcome to Pro Wrestling Weekly. Hey, Fred, how are you? Hey there, what's going on? Uh, nothing much. Um, just thinking, hello? Just thinking back in on what you were saying earlier uh, about Hogan. Yes. He, he, I mean, for how, his age, he thoroughly impressed me with his, with his, I mean, he, he took a beat and he was taking a pounding to the backside. And he still came back for more. It was, it was unbelievable. Yeah, there were a couple of back bumps that he took. He took the stinger splash in the corner. I mean, the concern... Going, you know, the concern at that point was that he didn't do any further damage to his back, considering all the surgeries that he had. But uh, he uh, not only took it, but he actually uh, had he actually had posted a tweet for uh, basically kind of criticizing those who had doubted him. I'll get that up in uh, just a, a moment. I know I had it up a minute ago, and I had to look something else up here. But yeah, here we go. For all the ignorant haters that hate. That I proved them wrong. Bumping after eight back surgeries, suck it, haters. That was his. Uh, <laughs> that was his direct, uh, direct from his Twitter. So obviously, uh, wow. Yeah, he. Uh, for him, I like to see him do well. He's a. He seems like a real good guy. He's just a good people. Yeah, he's good people. Yeah, and uh, I mean, it, he was re- he was real nice. I actually had the opportunity to meet and uh, get a get a photograph with him uh, this past Saturday at the. TNA fan appreciation uh, or the the fan the fan interaction fest that was going on because I was here I couldn't get down there earlier in the day but pretty much the entire TNA roster was there starting at nine thirty in the morning during like intermittent schedules but the main event of it was uh, was Hogan Flair and Sting and I got to meet all three of them and I was actually pretty much I was about uh, four or five people away from the back of the line uh, it took about three hours getting through the line to meet all of them and. They were, you know, just as cordial and professional and nice with person one as they were with me, you know, three hours later. So nothing but good things to say about all three of them. 
okay. Enjoy your weekend. I know I will. All right. Thanks, Fred. Have a good one. Right. Appreciate the call. All right. Let's look to vengeance. That's right. The vengeance lineup tomorrow. I gave the, the lineup a little bit earlier. My predictions certain to go wrong. Where to start? Well, we'll start with Christian and Sheamus. I don't know if that's necessarily going to be the opening match, but it's the one I'm going to go with for here. I think that Sheamus is uh, going to take that one over Christian. Dolph Ziggler and uh, Zack Ryder, U.S. title. I think Ziggler's going to retain the U.S. title, and I think it's going to be a, uh, a clean sweep for the Ziggs. That's right. I think he and Swagger are also going to take the tag team titles away from Air Boom. Beth Phoenix, I think she's going to hang on to the Divas title. Randy Orton against Cody Rhodes. I have a feeling Orton's going to get the win here, although you know how much of a supporter I am of uh, of Cody Rhodes and have been for quite a while. Miz and R-Truth against Triple H and CM Punk. Something tells me that, uh, unfortunately, Miz and R-Truth going to be swept under the rug again. Kind of hard to bet against Triple H because... Uh, before Cena seemingly won all the time, so too did Triple H. And speaking of Cena, Alberto Del Rio against Cena, last man standing match. Uh, I have a hunch that uh, yeah, I have a hunch that Del Rio is going to retain. Actually, as, as silly as that sounds, and that's probably because next month's Survivor Series, they have to focus on the hype between Cena and Rock and them teaming together up at Madison Square Garden. So. Have Del Rio keep the title, get a, a feud going with somebody else for the Survivor Series pay-per-view. And Mark Henry against the Big Show, I think Mark Henry is going to retain there as well. Those are my thoughts. Feel free to disagree, and uh, of course these are for entertainment purposes only. Bet with your head, not over it. Not that anybody's necessarily taking it. I've only seen that once. I think we were talking... Back at WrestleMania 26, they actually had odds for the various matches, but obviously that was a year and a half ago. Some, uh, well, you know, I'll get to the news and notes in a minute. Let's get to Steve, who's been hanging on for a little bit. Steve, welcome to Pro Wrestling Weekly. Bro, oh, man, you're living the dream, man. A little bit, yeah. I mean, I have to admit, I'm, I mean, I've had quite a few mark out moments over the course of the last week. Uh, it's like I'm, it's like I'm 12 years old again. Think about this. You met the two, I, I, I don't think I'm, I'm, I'm bragging on this. You met basically the two cornerstones of the business. You, you, you think about this. If Ric Flair and Hulk Hogan never wrestled once, who would be, who would be their replacements? You think about what they've done for the industry, just those two guys alone. Yeah, true. I mean, you know, I mean, do you, at, thinking back to that time, you know, I mean, in the in the early '80s, well, I mean, look, do you give they, Piper a shot? Do you go Savage? I mean, well, look at look, well, look who they replaced. This is how I got to look at your history. Hogan basically took over for Bruno. Rick yes, Blair took over for Harley Race. But I'm saying, take those two guys out. After Bruno and Harley Race, who would they, who uh, who would those owners think now? Who who's the next guy up if those two guys didn't show up? Because I know, you know, Vince, you know who Vince tried Bert right away to be the Annie Bruno was superstar Billy Graham. But that, that, that thought stayed in, uh, in Vince McMahon's mind. He said, I need somebody like him, but not like him. And that's when Hulk Hogan showed up. Well, I mean, that was the basis for, uh, for WWE's, I guess, DVD and book, you know, superstar oh, Billy Graham 20 years too soon. And, and, and now Ric Flair, I think it really came down between Flair and I think two other guys. Dusty Rose, I think, was some of the guys in the locker room's choice, but he had some, uh, not demons, but I don't think he was what, he, what, the end, what, what that company wanted. And I, and I was trying he didn't to, have the right image. He didn't have the right image. Now, they tried a young guy, Tommy Wildfire Rich, but he, didn't, he just didn't last long enough. And he, wasn't, he, he was getting close to the Ric Flair mold, but not quite Ric Flair. You understand what I'm saying? They yeah. had guys before, but once they found the, guy, the guys in their niches, they kept them. It's almost like you have to have pretend guys before you get to the real guy. A little bit, yeah. Um, almost as a backup. Because, I mean, at that point also, I mean, you want to look back to the 70s. I mean, Flair was in that, that plane crash. And, that's right. You know, was initially told, you know, that he wouldn't have much of a shelf life as far as wrestling. And, I mean, look how he's proved everybody wrong and has gone on to have one of the well, best careers ever. Now, when you met those two guys, uh, can I ask you a question? Were they in makeup or were they without makeup? 
Uh, it looked like everybody all around was without makeup, uh, and I, I know I don't want to necessarily throw anybody under the bus, but okay, there was some something. major major crow's feet going on with one Jeremy Borash. You know, okay. That's all I want to say about that. Let me ask you something. Of the three, which one should be collecting Social Security right now? Between Sting, Flair, and Hogan. You mean like which is the worst for wear physically? Is that kind in of other words, who should be in the rocking chair right now in your opinion? Hogan. <laughs> While Bill Melody chiming in, he already said Hogan, just without hesitation. I thought for sure you were going to say the nature, boy. You, you, you fooled me again. And I'm, I want to take you to school one thing. This is the home of ECW, and they can say it as much as they want in Philly. ECW, yeah, true. I guess nationally ECW it's like a whole other... Philadelphia. And, and speaking of ECW, how come they didn't... Uh, Rob Van Dam, does he look like, has he lost a step yet, or is he still as good as he was 10 years ago? Uh, if he's lost a step, it's maybe a half step, but I think if anything, I mean, he's just as as clumsy, I guess, is probably the best word to use. Well, well, well the question I want to ask you is, if he came back to WWE, where he kicked that pretender John Cena's butt from ring to ring, well, we've already stuff. seen that. I mean, right around the time of, uh, well, actually, yeah, that was the basis for uh, the the, the one night stand. You That's know, I mean, I, I remember I, that 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 sign hanging over. You know, if Cena wins, we riot, I'll and Van Dam ended I'm up coming, winning. I, I've never hated anybody more than John Cena. I used to hate Hogan, but I'm I'm really starting to hate Cena now. He's starting to. I, I would pay I would pay Rob Van Dam any amount of money to go in there and take him out. <sighs> wow. Once and for all. I mean, he is what's wrong with the business. Or if Vince really wants to go to nostalgia, how would you like to have Flair, Sting, and uh, Hogan beat the crap out of him in Survivor Series and have everybody give him a standing ovation? Wouldn't that be the ultimate dream? <laughs> or, am I, or, or am I going off on a tangent? Uh, maybe a little bit, and I'm sure that you're not the only one, though, that has that opinion. I, I, and you, I, know, you know how we'd end it, don't you? Have Rick Flair put a figure four on and having the click... A Triple H let nobody come in to stop it. You understand? Send a true message to the back room. Wow. The, the Mad Madison Square Garden all over again oh, 15 oh, years okay. later. Now we're on the same wave. Like, all right, Brian, have a good, good, good weekend, brother. No problem. Take Thanks, care, Steve. <laughs> Wow, I don't even know where where to go after that. We'll go to news and notes because we got about uh, we got about two minutes left here. Some uh, various tidbits. WWE this past Tuesday they suspended Heath Slater for violating the wellness policy. It was his first violation, and uh, therefore he was suspended for thirty days. So we will see him probably right after Survivor Series at the earliest, if my math is right with that. As far as the uh, the, the various number of days. Uh, Hall of Famer Jerry Briscoe. Well, uh, unfortunately, he suffered a minor stroke this past Wednesday. Uh, Ross wrote on uh, on Twitter, keep him in your prayers. Uh, followed up with a uh, tweet last night. Jerry Briscoe is home from a Tampa hospital, feeling better, still has more tests to undergo. My friend's a fighter. Uh, best of luck for uh, one half of the Briscoe Brothers Body Shop down there in uh, in Tampa, Florida. No, I know he's he's known for a lot more than that, but that Stu Jarrah is what you know what I kind of grew up with with Jerry. But no, he certainly had a storied career before that. Uh, WWE officials are said to be targeting the WWE Network launch around the same time as WrestleMania 28 in April. The, uh, the company has not publicly announced the launch date thus far, but uh, they're publicly listing it for some time in 2012, but they want to make it go sometime around WrestleMania. And in preparation for that, well, they've been uh, working on a couple of more TV programs, including a reality show with a group of WWE legends living under one roof, and fans are being asked to vote on a name for the new show, and well, here are the five choices they listed. WWE House of Fame, Old Timer Acres, Retired and Rowdy Roommates, Old School Yard, and WWE Legends House. You like any of those names? Good, neither do I. And while they've got you voting, they're also looking for the name of a uh, Monday Night War TV series that will also air on the WWE Network. Your options are Battleground Raw vs. Nitro, Battleground The Monday Night Wars, the Monday Night War, WWE Raw versus WCW Nitro, and Monday Night Warfare. That's going to do it for me. I'll be back next week to review Vengeance and 
I think I'll have an interview ready to go. Check the WBCB Facebook page. That's it for me. Stay tuned for high school sports here on 1490 WBCB. This is your station for Phillies baseball and Eagles football on 1490 WBCB, Levittown, Fairless Hills, Trenton.